Hey guys, this is Mommy Beluga Investing. Hi there, back again with me Rati in Mummy Beluga Investing. In this video, I'm going to analyze Singapore ONG Limited with the stock symbol 1D8. This is uh, one among many analysis requested by this uh, channel's viewers in August this year. Okay, after looking at the numbers, my quick take for Singapore ONG are in terms of cash position, the company is in pretty healthy situation. The downside is that there's no sign of appetite for growth. Though the price and dividend yield may be attractive for some, I'm not interested in making any position, at least for now. How did I reach the above conclusion? Follow my video as I quickly discuss the company's profile, EPS, dividend and other numbers. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginning YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or inputs, do not hesitate to put in comment section. It'll probably help me to get more perspectives and learn more. Okay, before getting into the data, I read out the disclaimer first. Disclaimer, this is an amateur video. My main intention is to record my own journey, learning and practicing investing from scratch. Over time, you may find my uh, conclusion, some inconsistency in my analysis. Please bear with me. My analysis is limited to the public data that I can access and the scope of my knowledge. Both of those change over time. This video shouldn't replace any financial advice and neither suggestion to take position, buy or sell in the stock market. Please conduct your own research before making any decision. But if you do your own research, I hope this video could be useful somehow. Now let's start from a brief company's profile. Okay, Singapore ONG Limited with the stock symbol 1D8 was established in 2011. It is intended as a health care service provider for women and children at affordable prices. SOG was listed in the Catalyst Board of the Singapore Exchange Securities Trading Limited since 4th of June 2015. As per 2020 annual report, SOG provided four group of services. The first one is obstetric and gynecology or ONG services such as pre-pregnancy counseling, delivery, pregnancy and post-delivery care. The second one is cancer related services, gynecological cancer, cancer related, related general surgery for breast, thyroid and colon, as well as skin and aesthetics treatments. The third one is dermatology and then the fourth one is something still related which is pediatric. Those clinics are strategically located throughout Singapore to provide easy access to its patients. This is the 20 largest shareholder according to SOG 2020 annual report. I again found IFAS as one of the 20 substantial shareholders. It is in position 19 with 0.28% uh, of shares. Yeah, The largest shareholder is Dr. Heng Tung Lan, one of the founder and the current executive directors of the company. Yeah. Okay, so that is a quick company's profile. Now let's have a look at the company's performance. Let's start from its EPS history. So here are plotted earnings per share for the last six years since 2014. I also added a horizontal green dash line as a guide to zero level. Earning below this line indicates that the company is recording a loss for that particular year. Okay, let's look at the screen. Let's look at the graph on the screen, yeah? At a glance, it seems that SOG earnings are pretty stable for the last six years, except that one dip in 2019. In 2019, the company reported 1.1 million Singapore dollar loss. One of the main contribution was reported due to $11.9 million goodwill impairment due to, to the declining earnings of the dermatology segment. Impairment of goodwill, from my understanding, sometimes comes from the decrease of market value of investment assets. Since SOG is not an investment company, I wonder what is this impairment may be. Going a little deeper, page 12 of the annual report mentioned that the goodwill impairment was related to the JL acquisition. 
So my further understanding here that SOG bought a company or a business at a certain price, let's say a company JP with the price X, it bought it because it is possibly another cash generating business. In 2019, it did not generate as much cash as it's expected to be. Given that, the auditor gave the new price for JP just in case they need to sell it off. Let's say the new price is Y. Now turn out the price differences when between when they bought it, that was X dollar. Now the market is valuing it at 11.9 million lower. So it is recorded as a loss in the balance sheet. Now this loss might not be real yet if JL had not been sold uh, yeah, yet that it is still a loss on paper. Okay, going down on the rabbit for a hole. So what is, what is JL actually? Has it sold yet? For that, I don't have the answer. However, I found that there were legal dispute arise from the JL acquisition result in 1.25 million reimbursement. Okay, so that was about SOG's earning. Now let's take a look at the shareholder perks. That is the dividend. Okay, to see the sensibility of dividend payout, so here I plotted three layers of information. The first one is the dividend payout over the last six years from 2014, which I plotted as red round markers connected by a thick red line, as we can see on the screen. On each of the points, I have annotated the two numbers, the number above the markers are the dividend payouts in Singapore dollars and the ones below are the payout ratios to the respective years earning per share. As a comparison to the earnings here, I plotted back the earnings per share at a thinner line with the same color, red. At a glance, I can see that SOG distributed majority of their earnings as dividend. I typically see this kind of a trend when the company have not much desire for growth but I might be wrong. So uh, the next question will be, is this sustainable? One thing that I can do to see the dividend sustainability is to make a circle back to the balance sheet and see if SOG actually has sufficient cash to pay this kind of dividend. So to do that, I have added uh, the company's cash and the current liabilities. These light purple bars on the screen are the company's cash with the amount stated on the right hand axis. And the gray ones are the company's current liabilities. Current liability is my first choice for department that require cash. Current liability could cripple the company's operation as it need to be settled in less than a year. What I want to see is that the cash reserve is higher than the current liabilities. From here, we can see that SOG, from the screen here, we can see that SOG has sufficient cash to serve their short-term liabilities. So they might have too much cash at hand. That is why they better distribute them to the shareholders. Okay, but now let's compare the dividend payout to their market valuation. In other words, their dividend yield. Now, this is what a dividend hunter might be waiting so far, dividend yield history. Here I plotted the average dividend yield per year as the round markers. At each of the markers, I placed an error bar. The variation in the year, the price variation in the year, is caused by the volatility level of the share price. The yield increase is if, if the share price decreases and vice versa. Okay, in terms of yield, SOG has a considerable attractive yield for 2021 at least. However, I get the sense that it may not be sustainable. Firstly, the payout ratio is already close to 100%, which means that all earnings are distributed to the shareholders. Then I cannot see any plan for expansion or growth. Hence, I can't see that any earnings, that their earnings will increase in the future. Okay, next, let's see the share price and market valuation. Okay, to see SOG market valuation, here I plotted four layers of information. They are, okay, the first one is the price, which represent market valuation of the company. It is the easiest information that we all can obtain. We just need to Google it. Okay, uh, but price alone sometimes misleading for the value of the company and its prospect. So I'll include some fundamental indicators to help me to decide. 
The second layer of information is the 10 times earning multiply, which here I plotted as a dashed green line. 10 times earning multiply can be considered as the price where price to earning, that is the PE ratio, uh, is 10. For me, I consider 10 times earning multiply has two purposes. The first one is that it indicates the price where I expect, where I have higher chance to break even within 10 years. You could plot 5 times earning multiply if your investment horizon is 5 years. Second, as a consequence for the first reason, I'll consider share price above 10 times earning multiply to be expensive. The third layer of information is the 15 times earning multiply. With the same principle as 10 times earning multiply, price above this indicator will be deemed as expensive. Here I plotted the 15 times earning multiply as a dashed yellow line, just like the traffic light. I'll start feeling nervous if the price cross this line, particularly for non-growth company. The fourth layer of information is the 20 times earning multiply. Here I plotted as a dash red line. I would consider the share price to be super expensive if it ever crossed this line. For non-growth company, I consider to cut down my position if this happened. Okay, so now let's see what's going on with SOG share price. I can see that historically, SOG was overvalued even till now. Considering that the company is not growing, I don't think it's justified. Currently, the share price hovers, yeah, you can see uh, on this uh, arrow, currently, currently the share price hovers above 10 times earning multiply and even close to its 15 times earning multiply. So here again, we have the annotated price chart based on the current earning multiply. I will put a reasonable price at 20 cents. Historically, this can be uh, considered as a rather low valuation. As of 19th of November 2021, when this video was prepared, SOG stock price was at 28 cents. Considering its cash position, the company is in pretty healthy situation. However, considering that the company is not growing and still cannot see and I, at least, yes, still cannot see any plan for future, future growth, the company is not that attractive for me, at least for now. Okay, so in conclusion, in terms of cash position, the company is in a pretty healthy situation. The downside is that there is no sign or a plan of appetite for growth. Yeah. Though the price and dividend yield may be attractive for some, I'm not interested in making any position, at least for now. Okay, so that's all for today. Please consider to subscribe because it means a lot for a beginning YouTuber like me. If you have any comments or input, do not hesitate to put in comment section. It'll probably help me to get more perspective and learn more. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.